I'm going to uh, open the meeting. Um, and the uh, people present at the moment are myself, Lynn Kelly, the chair. Um, Bob Williford's here. Yep. Uh, Doug Mayo is here. Uh, Lindsay Rowe is here. And um, Ginny DeSoger will be joining us shortly. Um, Laura Jordan is unable to attend today. Okay, um, we're going to need to do the approval of the minutes. And there were just, just two kind of simple typos. One was the question I asked about Dawn and who that person was. Um, in the paragraph that starts with COVID-19 information, at the very end of that, uh, we should add the word compliant. So the sentence should read, uh, also DOJ had a settlement with CVS because their vaccine scheduling site was not ADA and it should be compliant. The, it's just the word compliant was missing. And then the next paragraph under transition plan update, I uh, the sentence of uh, MJ talked about at the last meeting was not, it should be approved, not improved. Again, simple. Typos. That was, I believe, that was it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I had one on the next page where we're talking about sidewalk repair. Mm -hmm. um, the last sentence under that first paragraph is as they then would have to maintain them. Uh, I'm just concerned there might be some confusion about that because the city maintains the sidewalks uh, when they do. Um, what their concern was is they would have to keep the sidewalks clear of snow and bushes and whatever. But I don't know if there's a word that says that. Uh, mm -hmm. I suggested they'd have to shovel them. Yeah. Um, and perhaps it's fine the way it is. I'm just thinking you know, for the future generations when they say, oh, it looked like they, they were saying that people had to maintain their own sidewalks in this meeting. Yeah, yeah, I think just to clarify to shovel them, but I think there was something else that people brought up that they would have to build some kind of a retaining wall or something like that. Um, I so believe they were concerned about the, the slope of their lawn. Uh, if they got another four foot or four and a half foot of sidewalk into mm -hmm. their property, it, it might have to have their property regraded to come down to the edge or have a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, the city was aware of that problem. Okay. All right, so maybe we should just say that uh, change maintain to shovel uh, and 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 maybe just leave it at that yeah okay that'd be good okay all right so so those are the only uh, changes to the minutes do you want to table approving them until we have um, we know about the dawn piece or do we want to approve with that edit, we, I mean, we could table it since nobody <laughs> seems to know who that mystery person is. Doug, yeah. Um, uh, I cannot because I didn't attend last week's or last oh. month's meeting. I, I would have to abstain. So I would, I would make a suggestion that we table it until we have a quorum at that point because I would have to abstain. Okay, good point. So we will, uh, so then I um, am so going to- Are you making a motion to, to, to table the minutes? To table the minutes. I would yep. second that. Can second. I? Okay. If we need a second. Yeah. Okay, good. And then, motion is approved, yeah, to table. Uh, we would need a vote on that. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I approve. This is Lynn Kelly. And Doug, did you? Uh, I approve. Yeah. And Bob? I approve. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, let Ginny um, do the treasurer's report when she comes. Um, so, um, so the ongoing issues, um, the first on the agenda was the mass match assistive technology roadshow. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone, um, and, uh, especially Bob for doing the, the, uh, talking book library, uh, um, table as well. Um, I got a really lovely letter from hope, which I'll share with everybody. Um, just thanking us and, and bringing up the point of, of, um, the effectiveness of doing things together, you know, that it was, that it was a really nice opportunity and, and beneficial to the community. Um, so, um, overall, um, I think it was a really good success. Everyone that I talked to that I knew went, um, really enjoyed themselves and, and learned a lot. Um, I got quite a number of uh, things to take home myself to try um, and just things that I never even knew existed. Um, so I think I mentioned that they have a site called Mass Match, which has, you know, literally thousands of different types of things that the, that they provide. Um, and it's not a very user-friendly site. So Elano, who um, was one of the people who was the demonstrators, I mentioned to him that, that it is not a user-friendly site to use, the mass match site. And um, he completely agreed with me. And because of that, they are in the process of redoing the site. Um, so, it certainly um, wasn't, uh, how do I wanna say it? Generally, when I can't operate a site, I always assume it's me. <laughs> so it was good to hear that, um, that the site is being completely revised and should be ready by late autumn. So uh, Doug, did you wanna? Uh, Just writing down uh, the Mass Match website, and do you know if it's a .gov? Uh, I'd have to check it. Name? I'd have to check it. It is through the state, okay. but I'm it's, not. Oh, it's .org. Okay. It's .org. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't know if anybody picked up anything there, but um, so, for instance, I picked up a a number of things to try out. And um, the senior center has made an arrangement that um, they, meaning the UCP folks, will be coming like once a month and they will pick up anything that people borrowed. So you don't have to worry about wow. going to get it back to them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that, that was good. Um, Let's see, what else did I wanna say about that? Um, uh, again, I wanted to thank um, Bob and Mary for manning the table. Um, and um, one of the things we talked about, and I know that uh, Pam will be involved in this, is the certifying authority for the Perkins Library. Uh, and Bob, did you want to did you want to mention your um, question about whether the CDA might be qualified to do that? I would, yeah. Uh, you know, there the brochure from the Perkins Library that talks about who is a certifying authority, 
has a long list, uh, doctors, optometrists, registered nurses, and we've got a couple of those on our commission, uh, therapists, professional staff of hospitals, institutions and public or social service agencies, such as caseworkers, counselors, social workers, rehabilitation teachers, and superintendents, and of course, librarians, because of their superpowers can do all of that too, because they're equivalent to all of that. Um, but I was wondering if we would like to propose to Perkins that either generically members of the Commission on Disability Access could also approve applications to join the, the Talking Books program, uh, or if you know I, as a retired librarian with a degree in library science, am still authorized to do that, uh, if uh, Jenny, with her, her RN license active, is uh, authorized to do that, so we would have a couple people. But I thought I'd ask before I asked Perkins, because Doug might say, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it, it seems to me like it's it's a kind of a thing that that a magical power that we would then have to grant people the access. And certainly we would have to use it wisely and not uh, just get it like like giving everybody your network, uh, your Netflix password. It would be uh, people who really had some difficulty reading uh, for whatever reason. So I would ask uh, you know, if we could poll the members to see if they would be interested in having that ability. And if so, I would ask Perkins if it's possible. Um, well, I'm certainly as a as a nurse, I'm certainly uh, open to that idea. I don't presently have my license. I let it lapse, but um, you know, I am part of the disability commission, so right. I think I think I could qualify on that on that side. Uh, so yes, I'm in favor of of approaching Perkins about that. How about you, Doug? Yes, I'd be I'd be interested in in that as well. Okay. I think it might be helpful um, to let Doug um, or anybody interested on the commission to see what the application process is. I mean, it, the application is pretty straightforward, so. Um, you'd be able to to be able to glean pretty easily exactly okay. what it is and do yep um i'm happy to do that too okay. um and i just in march let my license go because i didn't have time to take any more classes oh dear so i know well i did i i, I thought this my other jobs are all consuming so there you go but I think I would be qualified still to do that. But like you said, we have all these other wonderful people. Yes. All right, then I propose that I contact Perkins and, and ask them kind of a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. Could the members of the commission, any of the members of the commission grant uh, a request to get into the Talking Books program? Uh, and then if not, could those who have the professional education and and training and experience as librarians or nurses uh, do that as well? Uh, I don't know, Doug. Do you have some sort of a credential that I might uh, flog to them? And... I don't have a nursing degree, uh, but I have a, a multitude of medical training. Uh, you know, in, in the services that I provided for, for 40 years, uh, I had uh, nonviolence training and, uh, you know, multitude of, uh, you know, they had level one and level two first aid, and I took those courses and passed those. Uh, but I'm, I currently am not certified because you have to take those every two years. Right. And uh, though I, uh, I let those lapse when I left the state service. And so I didn't let, I didn't continue with those, but, uh, you know, my memory, memory serves me well. So I know how to do the, uh, the new tech and I keep track of the new techniques that are out there. So, um, 
you know, I can, I can, I've saved a couple of lives since I've left state service. So that, um, I'm sure I could do that. So thank you. All right. Well, I think I'll, I'll push for the certification of all of us just based on our experience and, and credentials uh, and membership in the commission because we see disab disabled people uh, and they may not even be aware that the Talking Books program is available to them, but but we could make it that way. Uh, and I will send everybody the, the application form so you can see what it looks like. I may have to scan it. I don't know if it's online. Uh, I deliberately did not leave copies at the senior center because I feared that people would just grab them, fill them out, and then mail them to Perkins, mm -hmm. skipping the step of getting somebody to certify them. Yeah. So that that's my motion that I I be granted permission to do that. Second. Uh, I, I approve. I approve. I approve. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do okay. that. All right. Okay, the motion is approved and Bob will uh, contact Perkins on our behalf. Um, before I go any further, let me um, just, uh, uh, Ginny, um, do you have the treasurer's report? I do, I'm so happy that you asked. <laughs> well, I knew it was done. I, I'm sorry, I was, I apologize, I got stuck. Don't go to CVS, I've tried three times. Mm -hmm. Um, this is new. The um, we're just doing it every three months, and indeed, this time it changed. The handicapped parking fund um, has gone up twelve hundred dollars. People have been parking, I guess, in the in wow. the spot. So it was. Um, it is now four thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars and five cents, mm -hmm. which is an increase of twelve hundred dollars. Um, wow. And. Um, and then the other is, wait a minute, I have to go to the second one. You know how technically savvy I am, okay? There's two attachments in one thing, okay? The other fund is our just our regular budget and that we haven't used any of, that's $300. Jenny, could you re repeat that last, your first number? Okay, the, okay, so you got the second number. Yes. All right, the, the, um, let me go back to the first one. Uh, the first number is four thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars and five cents. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, we had a whole. It was you know March, April, and May. There was a whole bunch of tickets. There you go. Um, I have a a, a question on um getting reimbursed. I paid for the um business cards. Okay. Um, and. Uh, just wondered how I, if you might know how to go about doing that. So, um, actually, I think I'm gonna defer to Lindsay on that because in planning board, when I would go to those conferences, I would submit it to Eric who'd get the check. So, although I talked to Angelica, I, I just have to say, I don't know how to do that, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you would submit it to Christian and he can um, put it to okay. us. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah. It, not that much. <laughs> yeah. So, because we're about to change fiscal years, you should do it as soon right as possible. Right away. Okay. So, um, if you have the ability to do it in the next, before Monday, that would be great. Um, or, yeah. Or Tuesday. Okay. Monday would be great. Okay. Good. Well, thank you. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. So. Um, thank you for the treasurer's report. Um, Take a vote on that. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I have a, a, a motion? I'd like to make a motion to accept the treasurer's report. I'll second it. Okay. I'm, in, I'm in favor. It's, it's truthful. I can attest to that. <laughs> but unless, you, unless we need to see it, it's hot off the press from yesterday from Angelica, who does a fabulous job. Okay, so I approve. Uh, Doug is approved. Virginia is approved, and Bob is approved. Okay, all right. Um, so um, I mentioned the uh, the next thing on the agenda was the. Um, Building access or historical building, and Bob wrote a nice letter 
to who's the chairperson for the historical commission john pasiglia mm -hmm. i did get a response from john he said uh, thank you for that and he would look into it um, the issue was whether uh, one of the doors into Hawks and Reed could have an automatic door opener. And uh, Glenn had, had heard from the people there that because it was a historic building, it could not be modified that way. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, I do have a picture of that building from the 1880s and by God, that door is, is exactly like that. <laughs> if anybody would like to see it, I could share it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll we'll hear something back from the historical commission okay. within the next few days. Um, and then I, if you don't mind, I would like to contact the um, the owner. I think his name is Benjamin. Um, his wife gave me the card because um, yes. I, um, you know, I was the one who, uh, you know, had contact with her and. Sure. Uh, wanted to follow through on that. Um, and and there was only one other thing in your letter. I wanted to clarify that I, I couldn't get in at the time, but since then they have another door that I can access, but, oh, okay. I, have, but I have to get somebody to open that door for me. Yeah, not good. Right, so, but it, I, I just didn't want it to be misunderstood that there was no access for me. It, it is available. Um, yeah. So just wanted to clarify that in, in case it should come up or be misunderstood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Doug. I just wanted to uh, let uh, uh, this committee know that I am a member of that historical committee. So if I need to, uh, if I need to push or sway uh, John in any way, I'd be happy to, or keep an eye on on him to make sure that he brings that forward before the committee. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Yeah, I know that Good. since you weren't here last week, that you know I brought it, that issue up that I had gone to Hawks and Reed and it was uh, difficult for me to get in, um, but I had a nice conversation with the, the woman whose husband owns it um, and basically said they would like to do something, but it was a historical building and they didn't think they could. So that was kind of the background of what initiated this. Okay. But by all means, please, um, you know, feel free to, no yeah, I'd be happy to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, the um, COVID-19, I, I just wanted to mention, I'd be happy to send the article. There was a really good article in the Washington Post. Um, I think it was last week, sometime shortly, about long haul COVID and it being considered a disability um, and what that really means. Um, and it also has brought up a whole issue of, um, you know, first of all, what we kind of know as is quote, hidden disability, you know, one that isn't really obvious um, visually, um, but that it's important to realize that there are groups of people with issues like people who have long COVID or HIV, um, and that now there's a, a and I'll, I'll also mention like people who have um, fibromyalgia or Lyme disease. Um, there's a concern that people with COVID now being considered long holders being considered disabled are, are going to be using resources um, and that 
um, um, I'm sorry, let me just want to try to explain it. Um, that it's really important to, to keep allies together, that um, people shouldn't have to fight over resources. That's essentially what the article was about and how people can create allied groups to advocate. But that because long COVID, um, the numbers are going to be quite extensive, it's really important to start preparing um, for this huge population of people who are going to be needing resources. Anyway, I'll be happy to send you the article. Um, Bob, did you want to say something? Well, I went to the Board of Health meeting yesterday uh, online, and it was interesting that the numbers between April and May were much increased, uh, the yes. cases that were uh, confirmed COVID cases in Greenfield. Uh, but I think it was the public health nurse who was saying, you know, they used to concentrate on hospitalizations as the measure of how bad things were. And the hospitalizations are not so bad, but they're getting more and more uh, inquiries from people who are affected by that long-term COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, there's a guy who, who works in a production environment, machinery and stuff, who has dizziness as having as a result of having had COVID, mm -hmm. he can't work. He can't right. be operating machinery if he's dizzy and yeah. possibly gonna pass out. Mm -hmm. So there's somebody who is unemployed and temporarily at least disabled. Right. So they, they're seeing that more and more and they're concerned about it. Yeah. yeah. I would say too that uh, GCTV is now archiving all of the uh, the WebEx things that the, the city produces. So I'm sure Board of Health, if it's not already on gctv.org, it will be next day or two. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to see the Board of Health presentation, you could. Ginny? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it on GCTV because I was doing two meetings at once and missed part of Board of Health, so I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of that up. And you know, the whole issue of um, people being unemployed because of long COVID, um, one of the things it talked about in this article was that a number of people that's this happening to, don't really consider themselves un, uh, uh, disabled and that um, they they don't really quite know how to access resources for themselves. Um, so I don't, I'd like to be able to know that we could be some kind of resource for that. Um, and that brings up getting the word out. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the problem that always plagues us, <laughs> um, but again, it, it's an interesting article and I, I just, I'll be happy to share it with people. You actually can get the Washington post free articles for free. If it's about COVID, you can't get anything else in the paper. Doug, were you raising your hand? Yes. I um, I suggest that we put something on our web page, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that we're, you know, advocating for that uh, people with COVID so that mm -hmm. we can be a, a source of information for them uh, and not just, you know, for the city of Greenfield, but specifically for our web page so that we can point people to the, uh, uh, the direction that they need based on on their COVID, um, uh, especially if it's going to be long term and they need, uh, uh, you know, access to uh, disability services, 
we could point them in the right direction. And I, I think our, our, our website specifically can address, uh, should be the, 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 the point that that starts from and not just the city of Greenfield, but our, our website in particular. If the Greenfield site wants to do it, that's fine. But I think that we should take the, um, we should at least have have a link to to our website as well. Okay. Enough said. That's a good idea. I'm not sure how to go about that, but uh, could I refer to Lindsay for tech <laughs> information? Sure, um, we can certainly put up a link on long haul COVID. Do, is there a website you want them to go to? Is there a, um, it looks like the federal government has a website on um, long haul COVID. Um, so, or do you want them to call you all? I don't know what, you know, figure out what we wanted to say and then we can. Can I, can I just give it a little bit of thought? Sure. Um, um, the reason is that um, my sister works for the CDC and she might be able to give me um, maybe a list of a couple of places, but I'd also like to check with um, our own, the folks on our own health committee. I know one of them um, and, and just get some feedback from them um, before, before we do that. But it was just something that I, I thought um, would be appropriate for us. Yeah. Uh, Pam? Yeah, I was just going to say that when you do get that information together, we can absolutely can post it on the library um, website and Facebook page. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so was there anyone else who had anything to say about that? Okay. Um, uh, transition plan update. Um, I didn't get a chance to do it yet, but um, we talked at the last meeting about approaching the mayor to ask for, in, to include a line item budget or transition plan improvements. Um, I'm guessing I need to do that soon <laughs> um, since the end of the fiscal year is in June. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I uh, will do that in the next couple of days. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. Um, but I, I did think that was a, a, a good idea that Jeff Dugan gave us about, um, including it in a, a line item in the budget. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, in terms of the, uh, email address and business cards, I got the business cards made up. Um, I have plenty of them and I'm happy to give them out to folks. Um, let's see, Ginny, I can easily get them to you. <laughs> um, Bob, did you get some? I did. You did, okay. Um, uh, I could deliver some to Doug. Oh, okay. That uh, great. We're all in this together. I could, you know, I'm okay. happy to uh, Get them from you if you want me to bring some to Laura and to Doug. Nobody's, none of you live miles away. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't mean to, but Bob's got his already, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, um, if anybody else needs some? Does any, I didn't mean to discount any of our fearless leaders here. <laughs> um, um that, no, I mean that worked for the, uh, that are, work for the city. If anybody needed any, just speak up and I'll, it's the least I could do. Okay, thank you. Um, I, um, the, the only thing I was gonna ask Lindsay, if 
the email was going to change, she said she just had to step away for a few minutes. Um, could she mention to me that that the email might change with the new website? Um, but I wanted to have them for the um, uh, event, for the roadshow event. And I did give out a number of them. Um, and Pam, did you? I was just going to mention to Jenny that if she could drop a couple off at the library at the information desk, just so that we have them if anybody is looking for that information. That's all. Thanks. Jenny? That's good. That will make me make my little appointment that I didn't do. I was away with visit my daughter. Wow. Good. And Jenny, could I also, this is off the record, but I filled out my Perkins application. Could you? Could you drop it off at the library for me for Pam to sign? Absolutely. Well, okay. This is one stop shopping right here <laughs> in River right. City. No problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the business cards, they're finally made. <laughs> All right. Um, so, next on the agenda was the uh, sidewalk repair. Um, and just wanted to thank. Bob again um, on the issue of the complete streets. I think you contacted Eric and I think that worked out. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, um, so may I ask yeah. something on this? Sure. I'm asking this of my fellow board members and Christian too is on and Pam might know, but um, so I'm just throwing this out. This is just for me to learn. So I don't have to look on the computer again. I'm correct, right? Because we are getting, because we, we are getting this grant money, um, and it's complete streets. I went to all of those, like not all many meetings on complete streets, but because of that, we really have to follow the guidelines pretty much from mass DOT because of grant funding. And I'm just kind of asking that of the group. I didn't actually quite realize that, but then I had a little conversation with somebody and I think, is that the consensus? Does anybody know? Maybe that'd be more for Lindsay when she gets back. Yeah. Okay. I I don't. Okay, that's all right. Well, let's save that for another time. Sorry to to stop. The that's phone. okay. That's all right. Um, I would say that uh, it was actually uh, Alan Twarg who uh, made the corrections to the drawings that we asked for on the the complete streets to to make the sidewalk as it passed across driveways level, because the drawings showed that it was not level. And he said thank you and and gave me the the drawings, which I think I forwarded to everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of drawings, this just is a little bit of a sidebar. Um, at the road show, I uh, mentioned to uh, Alano um, the the difficulty that I have because I use an iPad to look at plans. Well, evidently there is some kind of machine. Um, I think it's called the Da Vinci screen, something like that. I was going to follow up on it that would allow you to like have an iPad or something small and connect it to this large screen so that you can read uh, prints or, you know, make anything really large that you need to. Um, so I'm just going to follow up with him about that. Um, it may be a piece of equipment that's way too large, but um, I did bring that issue up around being able to view plans, but, you know, find a better way to view plans. Doug, were you raising your hand? Yeah. Um, it's called a projector, and they're they're now handheld, uh, <laughs> and uh, relatively inexpensive. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you could easily uh, get a um, you get use of or make use of a projector. Um, you know, probably uh, any any city department um, or any city or or 
um, can get use can get access to it. So I don't I think they're online as well. So that's what they're called. Uh, they're basically you can get a, a wireless projector, and that's what uh, that's what the device is called. And um, uh, I just know that they're handheld. They used to be a big clunky thing. Now they're now they're not. Um, so, and they're relatively inexpensive. So if you're if you want to use it for plans, or uh, or anything of that nature, you could um, you know buy a projector yourself, and and uh, uh, and use it with with your own Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um. Yeah, I, I, I think what I wanted to say about the roadshow was I, I went there with a list of things that I wanted help with. And, you know, I probably had about five or six things and he was able to pull something out and make a suggestion. So at any point, if we have someone or ourselves, you know, we can call them and say, like this, for example, we need something to to uh, look at plans. And if they have it, again, they'll loan it to us for 30 days to see if it works. So, um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, and I just wanted to check with Lindsay. I know at the last meeting we made a, a request to the mayor that um, we be included on any infrastructure changes, uh, city infrastructure changes or um, things that affect the public access. So I haven't heard back, so I'll circle around with um, Lindsay when she gets back. All right, um, uh, Doug. Uh, if I may, uh, the historical commission is also should be on that list. Uh, and we sometimes get information, sometimes we don't. But uh, we, because oftentimes, especially if it's an historical building, uh, they if they want to make changes to, they have to um, notify us as the historical commission of Greenfield uh, of to make that change. Um, so uh, that's that just pertains to historical buildings, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before, but, and that's before it can be torn down or modified or anything of that nature. They have to notify us first. Okay, uh, just a couple of things under new business. Um, uh, Bob sent me information on the affordable connectivity program. Um, I not going to assume uh, that everybody knows about it, um, but it's a uh, a way to get your. It's a federal program that allows you to get a discount on your uh, internet access bill, um, and Lindsay had told me that. G set also offers it. Um, I I think it's a little bit income eligible. Is that correct, Bob? I believe it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, again, that's something I'd like to. If we have put up on our website, um, I'd really like to um, have that included. Uh, just to let people know that. Um, right, uh, Ginny? Oh, but I think that, Doug, did you have your hand up first? No. Um, actually, I've told people about that, but now that we're saying that, I would admit that I could really use that. Maybe I'll find that information from Pam when I go down for that library visit. Does she have that? Who has that information? I'm sorry, I stepped away for a moment. What information oh, are you oh, looking for? Oh, this is about the income eligible. 
for the internet. The affordable connect the thirty dollar. Um, yeah. Um, what I will look it up and I can send it to. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what oh, the okay. eligibility is, but I can find that out for you and I'll send it. I'll send it to you. <laughs> How's okay. That? And Bob yeah. sent Bob sent it to me. Um, I don't know if it had the income eligibility. It listed um, certain criteria too. Yes. Uh, like if you're on Medicaid or, you know, there were a few other things. Um, I don't remember them off the top of my head. You know. I think if you participated in the SNAP program, you're things like that. I think okay. there are certain programs that if you're part of, like, uh, I think SNAP, it, and I think WIC is another one that you automatically will qualify. Yeah. Or so I'm not sure what the other qualifications are. Mm -hmm. Definitely Medicaid uh, was, yeah. was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, really, I think really important for people to know about. Um, okay. Um, the uh, city of Greenfield website and accessibility features. Um, I don't see Lindsay. Back here yet? Oh, Ginny, did you want to ask? Um, I, I I had a little information on that, but if oh, I didn't want to step do. on anybody's toes, no, please um, do. So, I forgot to. I, I started a little follow through on this from an email from Bob Williford, and I wrote to, um, you know, Caitlin and Danny over in the town hall, and um, they, this new. This is what I know about it and other people, certainly Christian who's on anybody can speak up that knows more than me. They were having one meeting, but I just, I said, you know, we've all read a little bit about this. I think probably once again, from something, some, one of you sent to us, I think we've maybe all read about that. So I said, we have a little bit of expertise in this and they assured me that when, before it was ready to go live, that we'd have input. And I, cause I asked about that. And so, um, I asked very nicely and they very nicely said yes. And I guess maybe Christian, Christian, you can hear us, right? Is Christian there? I don't yeah. think he is. Oh, okay. I think Lindsay was. Okay. So this is, program. this is recording. So this is to the recording to that person out there recording. So, um, I'm just saying this so that you hear this. Could you, Lindsay or Christian or whoever, whoever like in the town hall, just make sure that we're, um, I asked sweetly and they were delighted to have us help, but just to keep that in the, uh, I'm just asking the recorder to keep that us in line there because I'm no expert on that, but I've learned a little bit and I bet others of you know even more. So we're all in this together and we're happy to help. Thank you. Bob, did you want to say anything? You had sent that Forbes article to Caitlin, I think. I did, yeah. The the solution that the city was was leaning toward or the contractor was leaning toward is an automated system. So if your website has some problem, it doesn't uh, describe an image or um, there's some some problem that would bollocks up a a screen reader, for example, it fixes it. It doesn't fix it ideally, but it does automatically fix it. Uh, there was a Forbes article that said those are not really very good, and you probably will not meet mm -hmm. the accessibility standards if that's all you got. So I don't know. I I. Uh, got pushed out of the development of the new web page. I, I had signed up and was seeing some of the give and take and uh, got invited to a meeting to preview the new web page. Uh, and the invitation went to the mayor and to Caitlin. And the answer was, why are you inviting Bob Williford? So I was disinvited. Um, right. Oh. I do have some other information about accessibility. Uh, we've been talking about closed captions. I had a, a request from a citizen who said 
you know, I watch YouTube and I turn on closed captions and, and I enjoy that. But when I watch the town meetings, city meetings, I can't turn on the captions. So last night was a great example, uh, a target rich environment, as we used to say in the, the fighter pilot world. <laughs> Not that I was a fighter pilot, but I was in the Air Force. Um, because there were four meetings last night. The first one was the uh, public safety meeting. And I logged into that. There was a button at the bottom of the screen that said CC, closed captions, live transcript. So I clicked on that. It said, oh, we are sending the host your request to turn on captions. Seconds later, it took me to a page where I could adjust the settings for the captions, the size, the colors, all kinds of things. When I got out of that page, the captions were, were on. Uh, I'm looking at captions on my page now for our meeting. Uh, I don't know if anybody else can see captions. Uh, again, the host had to turn it on for me. I then went to the Board of Health meeting, same procedure. Uh, a WebEx meeting at the bottom of the screen, it said CC, live transcript. I clicked on it. Within <laughs> seconds, it took me to live captions for the Board of Health meeting. It gives you the option to save the transcript, which I'm sure is what uh, Christian does to help with uh, the very good minutes that he does. Uh, and then I went to the third meeting, which was a Zoom meeting for some reason. Um, and what one was that? Oh, that was the uh, A&O, what's that stand for, Doug? Something in ordinances. In ordinances. Appointments in ordinances, yeah, meeting. And same kind of a screen, although it was Zoom, that said click here for closed captions. I clicked, nothing happened. I waited a little bit, clicked again, nothing happened. So I did send a message in the chat to the host saying, please turn on the closed captions. Uh, eventually I got a, a little lecture that said, don't use chat because that's in violation of the open meetings law. Uh, and I raised my hand and uh, Councillor Gwen was kind enough to say, we don't usually do this, but I'll give you a chance. What's the issue? So I explained to them that I needed closed captioning turned on. I did introduce myself as a member of the CDA. Initially, the town clerk said that there was a policy issue, that if they turned it on for one meeting, they'd have to turn it on for all meetings, and they'd have to talk about that. And I said, well, good news. The camel's nose is already under that tent because I've just been to two city meetings where they turned on closed captioning, no question. They agreed that it was a technology issue rather than a policy issue. Hmm. That because it existed as part of the software, they could choose to do that. And then viewers could say, yes, I would like to turn on closed captions and they could. They wouldn't turn them on for everybody. Uh, as we've proved, because I'm looking at closed captions now. And if uh, Lindsay was back, I'm sure as the host, she could probably turn on closed captions for anybody. So we'll have to ask her about that at some point. So, and then I went to the, uh, the school committee meeting, which is not actually a Zoom or a WebEx meeting, but it is covered by the uh, the community TV folks, the GCTV folks. And at the bottom of their agenda, it said, you can go to gctv.org and view this meeting. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, or you can go to, where was the other possibility? Uh, Facebook, YouTube, they also, uh, put them on YouTube. YouTube turned out not to be streaming that particular live meeting, but it would be posted, I'm sure, within 24 hours. YouTube, go to YouTube, and captions were available. 
again, you know, just a button on the lower left side of the screen that said CC, turn it on and you get, these are automated captions, so they're a little squirrely sometimes. Uh, I can't tell you how many ways Weta Gardener is, is uh, spelled out <laughs> when that comes up. Uh, and other names are hard for automated machines. Uh, Wouldn't want me to spell it. <laughs> um, but and just at the gctv.org site, it, you can say I want to watch live, and if they are recording a program and they live streaming it, uh, if you had your your cable TV through Comcast, you could watch it on channel 15. If you have it through GCET, you can't because Comcast basically funds the TV studio for the community television. Not the best situation, but they're working on it. So anyway, uh, I would say closed captioning is quite possible. Uh, and as you encounter town meetings, if you're doing them remotely, look for that CC button at the bottom and and you might have to fight your way through it and say, no, no, this is okay, it's allowed. <laughs> I see Doug has a question. Yeah, Doug. You're you're muted, can't hear. Not so much a, a question, but a comment. We, the, the town is now switching from WebEx to Zoom. So oh. that, uh, that is effective immediately. And um, so I re there's a uh, a button that has three button uh, three dots on your right screen if you're in Zoom, and the it has Q and A captions and highlights and then notes. And if you click captions and ha highlights, there there's your uh, captions right there. So uh, I just did it and. Uh, uh, I've been getting captions all along, so um, it, that's as easy as that is. So Zoom uh, meetings uh, will be very easy for you to get captions, and because we're now getting, uh, we've gotten rid of WebEx, we're doing it by Zoom, it should be very easy to connect to uh, city meetings. Next. Great. Okay, thanks. Um, I just I just clicked on the closed caption and it's working just fine. But this is WebEx. This one says WebEx. So, um, yeah, Ginny, you're next. Well, um, I so yesterday I was on two meetings and I did the WebEx on my phone and the closed caption just happened to come right up. But I don't know where that is here. Where did you? How does one do this? How did you do it? I can tell you because I'm on an iPad. Oh, okay. Um, um, it's in the bottom left hand corner. And there's a little looks like a, a quote and it says, Oh, yes. C. Oh, right. And I it was that. so helpful to me yesterday because. Look, it's on. <laughs> oh, man, you know what? I feel like a genius. <laughs> me too. Be like, Go to the head of the class. <laughs> um, now I can't quite see your faces, but it's okay. I got to come in for a lesson, Pam. It's great. You can uh, actually drag the captions up to the top of the screen okay. if you'd like. Oh, yes. You can just do that click way. on the caption box and just drag it where you want it to go. Okay, thanks. This is another tip. Here we go. You know, we might want to think about some sort of publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have to be just for the disability community, but mm -hmm. try to get the newspaper to say, hey, you know, if you're having a little trouble following the meetings, you can turn on closed captioning and here's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe, maybe something on our website. Uh, as I have seen, They've asked us to pare back some of our stuff on the website. You've said that before, Lynn. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's going to appear when we get the new version of the website. We'll see. Yeah. And um, just speaking about this closed captioning and um, um, 
and the new website, um, when I talked to uh, one of the guys from UCP at the roadshow, I asked him about, you know, the, the accessible websites. And his suggestion was that we ask people who have low vision problems um, to try out the new website. Um, because he said there, you know, again, as Bob mentioned, some of these add-ons are just automated and they, they might work for like one time, but the, and then they don't work again. So his suggestion was, um, you know, look at what the accessibility features are and get some people who have that limitation and try them out. And then you can go back to the website developer and say, you know, this didn't work the way it should have. So that was just another suggestion that they gave me. Okay. Um, uh, just the, the very last thing was, um, Bob had sent me some information on the home modification lo loan program and, um, Raft, which is the Assistance Family in Transition. What's the R? Uh, residential, I'm not sure. Okay. It's rental, I think. It's rental. 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 Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Takes a village. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, um, it, it would just, again, we can't load all this stuff on our website, but it just did make me think that I wanted people to be able to, to know that these programs existed. Um, I just personally, years ago, I used the home modification loan program and it was instrumental. I had a bedroom that was upstairs and I was able to, um, you know, put in a put in a room downstairs and when I sold the house I paid the loan back and it was great. Um Pam, you were raising your hand. Yeah, I would suggest um probably the easiest way would be to put the community action uh web page or web uh web address on it on your site because that's really such a great um mm. organizational umbrella. Okay. And so I think that'll help with the home modifications. They can, you can, they can answer, you know, the raft questions. Um, I, I would recommend that. Great. Uh, okay. So I'm sorry, that's the community. Community action. action. Um, it's the community action. Give me a second. Site. I'm almost there. Yeah, please take your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you were to go, um, if you were to put in uh, www.fcac, oh, wait, never mind. That's the wrong one. Okay, I just got it. Yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> www. FCAC.net. FCAC.net. Okay. Yeah, because it not only, um, and also, I mean, they can answer questions about uh, the eligibility for the, the cable, the internet. They can answer questions about SNAP and HIP. So they're a really great resource. Oh, great. Thank you, Pam. That's You're welcome. good. It's always nice to have it all in one place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there are a lot of good services available. Just hard to even know what to ask for sometimes. Um, okay. I just um, wanted to, in, in terms of announcements, um, 
nothing major at the moment. Uh, again, I'll remind people um, that the U.S. Access site, is that it, Bob? Um, uh, U.S. Also, Access Board. U.S. Access Board has a lot of wonderful um, presentations, training videos, um, really good stuff. He sent me one on uh, golfing, <laughs> golf courses. Um, and, uh, you know, they now have these golf courts, golf carts that paraplegics or amputees, it, it can still play golf. It kind of raises you up so you can stand up. And um, anyway, I learned a lot about golfing. <laughs> so any, any interest that you have, um, they, they have some really good information. Um, oh, Pam, did you, were you asking? Did you raise your hand? You're you're uh, not muted. I, I, I can't hear you. <laughs> I actually want to give you a different address. It's communityaction.us. Communityaction.us. US, yes. You know, that sounds strange. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, um, is Lindsay back? I don't hear. Oh, there she is. Hi, I am partially back. Okay. Um, we just had a couple of questions. Okay. Um, do you happen to know if the email, if our email address will be changing soon? You had mentioned that, I think, last time that with the new website, they might be changing our email address. It won't be our email address. It would be the web address, the website Ooh. address. Okay. Um, right now we have a, a short URL. So it says city of Greenfield. Or it's, it's greenfield-ma.gov backslash CED. What is it called? Backslash CDA, I think, is your short address. So that people can type and get directly to your website. Um, um, Greenfield, hang on, I'm just double check that. I yeah, I was just gonna grab my cards. <laughs> Greenfield-ma.gov backslash CDA. Um, let me find out, hang on. Anyways, we had a short, short website address and the moral of the story is when they change the addresses that may not stay. So, if the website address, not the email address, but the website address would be what would change during this okay. website transition. Okay. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask you at the last meeting, we made a request to send to the mayor for the um, any of the city's infrastructure changes that affect public access that we would be included in the final design. Did you by any chance hear anything back about that? Um, the mayor did wanna talk about it, but there have been a few other things going on in the city. <laughs> um, really? So, um, <laughs> we have not yet had a chance to touch base about it okay just just wanted to know if there was a response that's all um and um i wanted to send her a letter about putting uh, a line item in the budget for the transition plan do i need to do that by monday as well or is that okay? So that's the whole, whole other separate space. So in mm -hmm. that's part of the operating budget. Okay. The counselors have already voted on this coming year's operating budget. So okay. the money for July 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 is already set. Okay. Um, right. Typically the budget process starts, I believe for departments and committees in October. 
it might be a little earlier September. So you might want to request, I mean, still sending a request as soon as possible is right. preferential to get on their agenda. Okay. And, but, um, but I don't have a Monday deadline <laughs> is the answer. No, and no money would be available at the earliest until 2023. Three. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for walking me through that process. Okay. All right. Um, so I just um, would ask that um, someone is someone willing to be responsible for the um, website changes um, that we just talked about. I don't want to um, always you, turn to Bob for that. You mean the? I'm sorry. I should have raised my hand. Ginny. Did you mean the new city website? No, just that we no, talked just... about adding um, adding information okay. to to not, our website. Not not me. That mm -hmm. would that would be the last. You, I'd be the last person you'd want for that. Right. And I don't want to always add things for Bob, but he is our kind of go to tech person. Bob, if you're overwhelmed, I'll try. I guess I'd, I'd have to be reminded in what all the things are. Maybe I should go back and watch the video. I don't know. Uh, all the things we were talking about. I know that uh, Doug had some suggestions uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, Pamela's suggestion that we get community action mm -hmm. linked in there. Um, and I think if, if somebody can remind me exactly what we're adding, uh, okay, via email, that would be fine. Uh, right. And I could try to put the words together, but of course, I have no uh, web authority to post anything. Do you, Lynn? Or do we have to go through uh, Lindsay? I'm, I'm presuming we have to go through Lindsay. Yeah. Christian or I could assist once you have language. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be done right away. I mean, if you want to wait and listen to the recording, you know, till next month, that's fine. Because Lindsay was away for the conversation as well. Right. Yeah. It was just a thought about adding some other things. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything else? If not, then I will adjourn the meeting. There has to be a motion. Okay, I, I move that we adjourn a meeting. I second that. Okay. And, and a vote too. Yep. In favor. In favor. And we finished early. We did. <laughs> it's a, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll just touch base with you, Ginny, about the cards. Yeah, and they're there, so I can come. I could get them after my walk. Okay. Are they okay? Sure. All right. Okay. That, that's that's what I'm going to plan to do. Okay. Okay. All righty. Over and out, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Take care.